Well, g'day, it's Pastor Shane here from MP Church. The talk that you're about to watch was given as part of our Burning Questions in Crazy Times series given at our Aura and MP Church services. If you like this content and you'd like to watch more of it, let me encourage you to go to our Facebook pages and like those and go over to our YouTube channel and like and subscribe. But for now, I pray that this talk might answer one of your burning questions. Why don't we pray as we come to God's word. Our Father in heaven, we pray that you may give us wisdom. Speak to us, we pray. We pray for any who are joining us today who don't know you, who are investigating Christianity. Lord, let your word speak to them today. Reveal yourself to us through the power of your Holy Spirit as he works in and through the word, as you promise he will. In Jesus' name, amen. Why does a good God allow COVID-19? I think the first thing we need to say is that everyone grieves differently. And that's what we're feeling right at the moment, grief. Grief about deaths that we've seen, grief about uh, the reality of our own country and what's happening around us, maybe uh, grief about what might happen in the next little while. It reminds me of the time that my daughter was born. Uh, she was born with special needs. And when she was born, the doctor said to us, uh, you've got a great, beautiful little girl. But the doctor also said, look, I think she might have Down syndrome. And that turned our world upside down. And at that time, I didn't need to have some great discussion about why God allowed this, some theological argument. I just needed someone to sit with me during that time of grief. We rejoiced in having a beautiful little girl, we still do, uh, but we grieved for her as well. We didn't know about the future, we were anxious about that. We just needed someone to sit with us, a little bit like Job's friends when they first came. And they just sat quietly with him, that was good. The minute they started talking in the book of Job, that's when the trouble started. So if that's you, right at the moment, I just want to encourage you, reach out to us. Uh, send us an email, um, ring us, uh, talk on Facebook. Uh, let us be there with you during this really hard time. But I've been asked to address the matter of why did God allow COVID-19? And I want to make three points. The first one is that the world didn't start like this and the world won't end like this. The Bible is really clear about that. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, we're told that God saw all that he had made and it was very good indeed. Notice that, very good indeed. In the Garden of Eden, things were wonderful. And at the other end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation in chapter 21, verse 4 and 5, we're told that God will remake the world make it all good, new heavens, new earth, and a heavenly city will come down to earth. And we told this, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief and crying and pain will be no more. So the Bible starts in a garden and everything's great. The Bible ends in a city. Notice that is a movement from a garden to a city. And in the city, everything's great as well for God's people. The problem is you and I, don't live in a garden and we don't live in the city. We're living here in this world. And the problem is this world is a world that's full of sadness and pain and sorrow and sickness. This is the world where we're under the curse of death. And it's a world of our own creation. The Bible is very clear on this. Genesis chapter 3, uh, Adam and Eve rebel against God. They think that they have a better idea of what to do than God. In fact, they dethrone God so that they can put themselves into the place of God. They make themselves God. And from that point on, God curses Adam and Eve and the whole world. The whole world has rebelled against God. Adam and Eve and us as well, all of us, whether aggressively or just passively, all of us are under the curse of death in this world because of our rebellion against God. A Roman says it like this, we know that the whole creation has been groaning together until now. Notice that's the whole creation. Uh, animals, the planet, everything. Why is it a mess at the moment, uh, globally, even before the pandemic? Why is it a mess? Because of the fallenness of the present situation where we are now. And because the Bible starts with a wonderful garden and it ends 
with a beautiful city. That's why Christians can have a hope even in the midst of where we are now. Romans 8, 18 says it like this, I consider that the sufferings of this present time, notice the sufferings are there, they're real, and Christians feel them. The sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is going to be revealed to us. That's the glory in that new heavenly city that God promises for all who believe. So the first thing to note is the world didn't start like this, and it won't end like this. We're in the middle. The second thing to note is that God is right now challenging you and me to look up, to look to him, to face our own mortality, to find wisdom. C.S. Lewis, the author, says it uh, like this. Uh, he, he wrote a book called The Problem of Pain. It's a great little book. But he says this, he says, pain insists upon being attended to. So you have pain, you can't not notice, it's right there. God whispers, he says, to us in our pleasures, he speaks to us in our consciences and he shouts to us in our point, uh, pain. It is a megaphone, he says, to rouse a deaf world. Notice that's like a megaphone, death. It's a stark reminder that you and I are all mortal, that we're all under the curse of death. It's a living out, the pandemic is a living out of the promise in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 which is man is destined to die once and after that face judgment. Notice we're all destined to die once. Uh, if the pandemic doesn't get you, something else will. And this pandemic, the, the suffering all around us, what we see on TV is a stark reminder of our own mortality. So if you're feeling grief at the moment, if you're feeling anxious at the moment, that's the right thing to do because death is horrible. Death is terrible. Death is part of the curse. And therefore, we're told in the Bible that when you look upon death, when you look upon sorrow and suffering, there is a call to find wisdom, to look up to God. So Ecclesiastes says it like this, wisdom is found in the house of mourning. Notice it's not found in a house of partying. And we've had 30 years of economic growth in Australia. Things have been wonderful. The house of partying could be considered Australia. Now, wisdom is found in the house of of mourning. It says like this in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2, it's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, since that is the end of all mankind, and the living, nuts this, and the living should take it to heart. Uh, what it's saying is, when you see death, whether on a grand scale like we're seeing now, or just one person that you know and love, that's a time for us to face their own mortality, to look for wisdom, to look up. Jesus said it like this in Luke 13. Uh, there was a tower that fell down and people had died. And uh, there was a, a terrible murder that had happened as well, the first few verses of Luke 13. And his disciples asked him, why did this happen? What had happened to these people? And he says in verse 2 of Luke 13, in response to them, in response to them seeing on the news, terrible news. He says, do you think that they, the people who died, do you think that they were more sinful than all the other people because they suffered these things? No, he says, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish as well. He's saying when you see death, whether it's by evil hands or by natural causes, or whatever, when you see something terrible, Realize that you are also under the curse of death. And that what we need to do is repent, to turn back to God, to look up, to look to Jesus, to look to Jesus and live. So the first thing to note is that the world didn't start here and it won't end like it is here. It started wonderfully, it'll end even better in the new heavens. And the second thing is that God is telling us right now to look up, to look to him. But the third thing to note here is that suffering is at the very center of Christianity. Christianity doesn't say, uh, follow Jesus and there's no suffering. Christianity doesn't say that God's far out there somewhere beyond. No, Christianity is about the God who stepped in to our suffering world so that he could overcome the brokenness of our world. 1 Peter 3 verse 18 says it like this, For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring you to God. Notice that? 
look up during this time. Where are we looking to? We're looking to Jesus, who is there to bring us to God. The Christian sign, after all, is the sign of Roman execution. It's like an electric chair or a a terrible injection of poison. It's a terrible, terrible thing, the cross. And Jesus willingly went to the cross. Notice Jesus, who's fully God and fully man, was willing to suffer, to enter our world of suffering. In fact, to suffer on our behalf, the worst suffering. He stepped into his own creation. He stepped into this broken world that you or I in now so that he could lead us to God, so that we could have hope of that future glorious city. Isaiah 53, the Old Testament says it beautifully, says like this. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains. But he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities, punished for our peace. And we are healed by his wounds. We all went astray like sheep. We all have turned our own way. And the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. Notice Christianity, at the very centre of Christianity, is suffering. Jesus, in fact, says, if you want to follow me, you need to pick up your cross and follow me. Now, that's not in fine print at the bottom of the contract. That's in big letters at the top. You want to follow me, you've got to pick up your cross, deny yourself, follow Jesus. So some may ask, well, how can a good God allow the suffering of COVID-19? Well, the bigger question is this. How could a good God allow his good son to suffer in a place of sinners like you and me. How could he do it? Honestly, I don't know. But why? Well, the Bible's very clear on that one. For God, we're told in John 3, 16, for God loved the world in this way, that he gave his one and only son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus died on the cross, that we remember that on Easter Friday, but he rose from the dead, the conquering, victorious king. We remember that on Easter Sunday. The Christian can have a hope, and not to avoid suffering in this world. We'll all face our mortality. Man is destined to die once, and after that, face judgment. But the Christian knows the judgment's been done. And the Christian knows that the resurrection's real. We know of the time to come. Suffering brings the present acutely into focus, doesn't it? It makes you think about your family or your situation. But the present will, the Bible promises, will give way to eternity. So the question is, are you ready to step into eternity? It hasn't always been like this. It was good. It will be good again. The challenge is to look up. The challenge is to look to the suffering Christ. A man of sorrows who's conquered death and risen from the dead. But maybe you're wondering, what, what's on the other side of death? Maybe you're not there yet. You're checking out Christianity. Uh, our next big question next week will be addressing exactly that. What's on the other side of death? That's next week. Let me pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for the glorious gospel, the great news of Jesus who came and died in our place and rose from the dead and the promise that those who are his will be gathered with him in the glorious a new earth, a new heaven, in that glorious city in the book of Revelation in chapter 21 when God will wipe every tear from our eyes and the, there'll be no more crying or mourning or suffering because the old order of things, the world we live in now, will have been replace with this new, glorious, eternal, resurrected world. In Jesus' name, amen.